Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my Women in Translation review for 2023. So, Women in Translation uh, Reading Month took place in August. It's been going on since 2014, which technically I think makes this the 10th year. It's the brainchild of Maytel Radzinski, and it's a way to highlight uh, f female writers in translation and also occasionally female translators as well. As a group, in the U.S. at least, uh, women writing outside of English aren't translated uh, as much and aren't read as much. So this initiative is a way to try and balance the scales a little. There's been readathons on BookTube, but it's known in wider circles as well, like indie bookstores, and uh, I'll leave a link uh, to the website down below. <clears throat> Anywho, I will be reviewing an Egyptian novel by Orly Castel Bloom and translated from the Hebrew by Todd Hasek Lowry. Just a brief note on the translator before I begin, because I've read his YA contemporary book, uh, Me Being Me is Exactly as Insane as You Being You, some years ago. And it's a very different sort of book. It's uh, epistolary, found document style, where the YA protagonist tells his story through lists. <laughs> Uh, and my review I'll leave a link down below. So Orly Castel Bloom was born in 1960 in Tel Aviv to French-speaking Egyptian Jews, and uh, French is her first language. She's the author of 11 novels and short story collections. Her novel Dolly City was recognized in UNESCO in their collection of representative works and has also been performed as a play. Uh, and an Egyptian novel uh, won the 2015 Sapir Prize, which is a literary uh, prize in Israel. The novel is autofiction, comprised of a series of postmodern vignettes. Castel Bloom is chronicling her own family of sorts, whose roots go back to Egypt. Her father's family is descended from Spanish Jews fleeing the Inquisition. Her mother's family's history in Egypt is from time imm immemorial. The way she phrases it, her mother's people were the Israelites who said no to Moses when he came to bring them to the Promised Land. But really, most of this book takes place in Israel in patches from the 1950s onward. It begins with the marriage of her parents, most notable for the way that uh, her mother only announced it the day of while looking to leave work slightly early. It then deals with issues of displacement. Castel Bloom describes her parents as radicals, socialist kibbutzniks, who refused to tow the kibbutz organizational line when it deviated from the USSR. They were kicked out of the movement, and then they moved to Tel Aviv. And uh, Orly Castel Bloom makes commentary on changing political mores in the state level. But frankly, I found most of these chapters to be banal and disconnected. Castle Bloom refers to herself as the older daughter to try and maintain some distance from this autofiction. In a video interview with the Melbourne Jewish Week, which I'll link down to below, she talks about writing about her own displacement when she was unable to travel with her family to Birmingham in England to help with a relative's post-surgery. But undoubtedly, the most intriguing stories of displacement were the most fictional. In a medieval one, she imagines family members who stayed behind in Spain after the expulsion and forcibly converted to Catholicism to stay together. Later, she imagines the last Jewish woman living in Cairo with a tenuous grip on her holdings during the Arab Spring. The salty part of me thinks, what do you know? Maybe fiction is the most compelling part of a novel. It's more than that, too. With respect to Castel Bloom's fame, maybe I'll finally learn to stay away from literature marketed as postmodern vignettes. It's really not my style, as uh, this and several other books have proven. But if you'd like to read more of my thoughts on this particular book, I will leave my Goodreads review listed down below. And that about covers it for me now. I am filming this in September, trying so desperately to get it out already and move on to other things that, you know, the lighting isn't great, but this was a good time for me to sit down and film, so... But anyway, uh, I should be back on this channel uh, later uh, to talk about, speaking of September reading, to choose my page 112 tag pick, which is a TBR game I play monthly, and I tend to get so excited about that I film it early, I but stay tuned after I edit it and put it up here uh, shortly. I hope all of you who participated in Women in Translation Month uh, enjoyed your reading. I'd love to hear about it. If you got to anything good 
or bad, whatever you'd like to say. And thanks to May Tolverdzinski for, you know, inspiring all of us with this project. And yeah, thanks so much for watching, everyone. And I'll see you next time.